Hi guys, today's video will be about the cash receipt journal. So um, today our objectives are to understand the function of the cash receipt journal and to understand how to record transactions in the cash receipt journal and related subsidiary ledgers. So uh, we'll move on to number one, the objective. So what is the cash receipt journal? The cash receipt journal is a journal that specifically records all cash inflows including checks to the firm or bank deposits and this this journal is designed specifically for the firm, hence unlike the sales journal, so each column will com correspond to the most frequent mode of cash inflow that the organization receives. So if we remember the, ca the sales journal, all those columns and all the categories in them, they're always fixed and they're always the same, whereas in this, this journal, um, each column will correspond to you know the most frequent mode of cash inflow. For example, if, it's, if we mostly receive revenue and uh, cash, through sales and things like that, we'd include sales revenue, accounts receivable, and any cash at bank. Uh, whereas if we receive um, cash inflow by another means, um, we'd have to put it into another. We'd have to insert another means of credit um, into the uh, the journal. So why do we use this? So the convenience it's convenience of having all cash inflows in one location rather than um, them all being in a muddled up general in a general journal. So there's no need for narrations anymore. Um, there's an extensive, so if there is an extensive ju uh, general journal, it makes it difficult for us to track down any, makes it difficult for us to track down any inflows. And especially when we have to look through all this, uh, a multitude of different um, journal entries on certain days, it makes it really difficult to track them down. Um, it's easier for us to track inflows from um, specific debtors when we have um, a subsidiary journal, uh, subsidiary ledger as well. And we can also use the cash receipt journal to verify any repayments that have been made. So if we're given a date from our debtors that they repaid us, um, then we can just look through our cash receipt journal and see if they did in fact pay us on that day. Yeah, so if we move on to our second part, so how do we actually use this special journal? So um, first things we do, step one is to write down the date, the origin cash inflow, the destination of cash flow and the amount of um, the amount of cash being transferred. So let's just ignore that. We'll be discussing that later on. So then um, so step two, amounts relating to any accounts receivable from customers with subsidiary ledgers, they need to be posted to their respective subsidiary ledger and these amounts will represent the repayments that they made off that debt that they owe us. So, um, and then lastly, we need to post those column totals to respective general ledger accounts. So well, I'll just give an example, so the three examples that I have did today. Um, so on the say on the 13th of June, XLTD repaid $100 it owed earlier this month, remember they um, they bought inventory of us off credit um, on the 8th of June. So um, they engaged a discount, a cash discount that is, of 5 slash 10. And that means um, they receive a 5% discount if they paid within 10 days. So normally, um, a jour the journal entry for this, if they did engage the discount, would be an adjusting entry. So it would be um, a debit of discount allowed. of five dollars. Uh, we assume discount allowed is an expense of doing business and then we also debit cash so they only pay us ninety five dollars of cash because they got this discount and then we credit accounts receivable of one hundred dollars because they owe us um, one hundred dollars less. Okay so on the 28th of June then YLTD repaid uh, paid actually two hundred dollars for inventory so that's just sales cash sales that is, and then the 29th of June, ZLTT repaid $300 of cash it owed from earlier this month. So how will we do this? So number step one, we've got the date, the origin account, the post reference, um, we got all these columns, so cash at bank, discount allowed, sales revenue, accounts receivable, other, and cold. So other would be um, our column that we have for any miscellaneous inflows cash so for example like donations and things like that so if we start off with our first one up here first transaction so the 13th of June the account name will be accounts receivable of XLTD the post reference if we remember is 100 
dash one, so subsidiary ledger one, and in accounts receivable, and that's the the account number for it. So Cash App Bank, we only got ninety five dollars because there was a five dis uh, five dollar discount allowed, and then that is credit a hundred dollars off account accounts receivable. So then twenty eighth of June. We, uh, we actually have a sales, a cash sales from YLTD. So there is, so the account that this goes to will be the sales revenue. So it's from sales revenue and um, it will be with a reference number. Um, we don't actually have one. So we tick this off. This assumes that we've, um, we've posted it directly or that we will post it. And then there was $200. So we got a $200 inflow um, of cash. And that was from two hundred dollars of sales revenue that we credited. So the 29th of June. Uh, we also do a cogs of one hundred dollars because remember, remember that um, our our inventory is just marked up fifty percent. So on the 29th of June, so ZLTD repaid three hundred dollars it owed from earlier this month. So it's again from accounts receivable of ZLTD. Post reference is 110-3 and it repaid us $300, so we less $300 of our accounts receivable. Okay, so moving on to number step two. Sorry about that. So step two, um, so we start posting these to our subsidiary ledgers only if it's relating to accounts receivable. So uh, remember on June 8th, we, there was a credit sales from the sales journal of $100. And um, now they've actually paid that back. So remember it was June 13th, they've actually paid that back. So it was repay. And that is from the cash receipt journal, one, we'll assume it's one. So the balance here is zero because 100 minus 100, um, 100 debit minus 100 credit is zero. And then on June 29th, ZLTD also repaid. It's uh, it's a loan or it's debt to us from the cash receipt journal. That's our first reference. Also of $300, and that gives us a zero balance as well because 300 debit minus 300 credit equals to zero. So now we have to just post the, the totals to um, the ledgers at the end of the month. So we'll just enter our details back in. So we have 13th of June to accounts receivable of X, so 195,5100. Then on the 28th of June, there was a cash sale. So sales of, so we tick that, because we're posting that, $200 and sales revenue of $200. We have a $100 COGS because that's how much it costs for inventory. On the 29th of June, there was another repayment, but this time by ZLTD of $300. So $300 to the bank and um, $300 off, oops, sorry about that, $300 off accounts receivable because they don't owe us that anymore. So, or they owe us less. Yeah. So I've just given our, um, so the chart of accounts, I've, I've given us um, these numbers. So cash will be 99, discounts allowed will be um, chart number 390, sales revenue will be 330, accounts received will be 110. Um, there's no other in this one. And then in COGS, um, this will also affect inventory. So COGS is 340 because um, that's the debit part and then the credit part will be inventory which is given as number 100 so we're just going to give out our totals so 595 that's 5, 200, 400, oops sorry and 100 okay so now we're going to quickly post these to our cash at bank so remember um, in our subsidiary ledgers this is how it goes always Oops, sorry, I just moved that up. So always we have a date here. There is the description. We then have our reference number. So just remember to get this format right. Um, debits, credit, and balance. Okay. So um, we have on the 30th, 30th of June, 
our total from our cash receipt journal. So CRJ, CRJ is uh, $595. So our balance would be $595 debit. And then if we go through here, the date here again, 30th of June, description for here, total CRJ, reference number CRJ, we have a discount, remember, of $5, and that's a $5 debit. So that's the balance. So balance, credit, debit, reference number, description of what happened, and then the date. Okay, and then we'll move on to our last subsidiary ledger accounts. Okay, so of sales revenue. Uh, remember, in our sales journal, there was the total of our sales revenue was six hundred dollars, and we've now actually recorded another two hundred dollars from our cash sale to YLTD. So we need to put that in. So on June thirty, so total from our CRJ, so cash receipt journal, is um, two hundred dollars from our sale. So that gives us a balance of eight hundred dollars. So six hundred plus two hundred is eight hundred dollars credit. So then we move on to our accounts receivable. So in June thirty. So the total C R J. And remember that um, our post reference will always be from our journal, so CRJ. If we wanted to have it as number one, we can have it as number one. So assume it's just on um, page one. And then the amount for this one would be $400 of credit because they paid off $400 off the debts from the subsidiary accounts. So they'll only be left with a $200 um, balance of debit. And then we move on to COGS. So June 30, so the total CRJ, um, our cash sale from our, uh, from YLTD, so CRJ one, was, um, if we remember, it's $100 de debit, so there'll be $400 debit altogether. And then last but not least, we have an inventory. So total CRJ, CRJ. And then we uh, we had a one hundred dollars credit of inventory from our sale, which will make it four hundred dollars credit. Okay, so thanks for sticking around, guys. I've hoped you learned something today. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit spoonfeedme.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.